we did 16 Talos install fest live streams and that was across different providers different environments all different scenarios where it should work and in almost all those cases we were using our standard documentation at talos.dev but there was one stream that didn't work and that really bothered me and that was aws the aws docs made some assumptions about how your environment was set up specifically your aws accounts and it was using things like the default vpc which weren't really good practices so we rewrote the aws docs and let's walk through them to show you how to set up talos in an aws environment and how why we would do some of these things you can find this guide in our installation docs under Cloud Platforms AWS. So go check it out in the docs. We'll put it in the show notes as well. And let's just get started and walk through it. Up front, you need to have a few things installed like Talos Control, which gets installed through a tap, Cube Control, JQ. IP Calc is used to calculate your subnets, so we can make three subnets across three AZs. And then Curl and XZ is optional, but we'll get into that in just a minute. First up is just creating the resources and we need to create a VPC. And we're doing this with an example of US West 2, but you could pick whatever region you want. We also picked a uh, default CIDR here for the IPv4 uh, subnets. Again, you can pick whichever one you want, just make sure it doesn't overlap with some of the defaults in Talos itself and Kubernetes uh, so that you don't run into problems there. So let's create our VPC. It's also going to be saving a bunch of variables here um, with this output. So make sure you keep the shell running uh, because this will help us clean up things at the end as well as send variables back and forth to other commands that will need these variables. Here's where we calculate those ciders and we're just going to say we want three ciders. Um, so this ipcalc command is going to split the uh, cider into slash 22s because we had a slash 18 before. And then we're just taking the top three. It's it's really crude way of doing it, but it works and you don't have to manually set it. It also works if you set your own cider uh, for something else and you just want to split it. Now we're going to create three ciders, or sorry, three subnets. And the thing we do first is we describe our availability zones to make sure that we have three in our region. Uh, many of them have more than three, so we're just going to, again, take the top three that get returned and then we loop through uh, this to make a subnet in each az that we want to use with the uh, cider that we're having we have in the variable and then we set a couple uh, one feature here of using um, the resource name instead of ip address for the host name because it's just nicer to have That's gonna loop through each one. It'll spit out the uh, subnet IDs, but it also saves them here to this subnet variable so we can use it later. Now we need to create an internet gateway uh, because we're gonna be using a load balancer and the internet gateway sits in the VPC and has, uh, it can kind of, all the subnets can route through it to get out to the internet. So a couple things here of just first creating it and then attaching it and then setting up a route table. Um, uh, yeah, setting up, setting up the route table for uh, that, uh, for the VPC to route the default 00, zero traffic, anything going out, outbound through the internet gateway. Many of these commands ha don't have output, but some of them have some, like this create route command returns true. Um, it's very inconsistent, and if you know AWS, uh, you know it's inconsistent. And then here we're going to fetch the uh, AMI that exists in AWS. We publish an AMI into AWS from our build system whenever we make a release. So you can use the latest one and just look it up without having to upload it yourself. And the main things we're doing here is just JQs to parse it out uh, and then using the AWS region. And we're looking for the AMD64. You could set an ARM64 if you wanna use Graviton instances, but in this case, it's fine. Um, we're also using 170, which I think 175 is the current release as of recording. And it doesn't actually matter because when we do our install, we can tell it to up, update and install a different version if we want. If you want to create your own AMI and manage that yourself, you can do so with the docs here. We're going to go ahead and skip through to creating a security group instead of uh, following the manual install or the manual upload. First up is to create a security group, and this is going to allow us to have network traffic that works in the VPC. 
We need to allow all traffic in the VPC between the nodes because uh, not only do the worker nodes need to talk to the control plane nodes, but also if you're running any workloads, they might need to talk to each other. And then we need to open up port 50,000, which is the Talos API, and as well as 6443, which is the Kubernetes API. And in this case, we're opening up to the world because the load balancer exists inside of the VPC and it is exposing 6443. This is optional to enable CubeSpan, uh, but it's nice to have. Uh, in this tutorial, we do generate config that has CubeSpan enabled, so you might as well do it. Uh, but this is opening up a UDP port for WireGuard uh, to the world as well, so that nodes could connect back into the VPC. And now let's create our load balancer. This load balancer is going to be in front of the control plane nodes. We'll have three control plane nodes and a load balancer that we hit for all the Kubernetes maintenance and calls. Uh, and so our, our Kubernetes control plane is highly available. But when we want to do a Talos commands directly to a node, we're going to use the endpoints for the nodes themselves because they're going to have public IP addresses as well. And this also just saves out the load balancer DNS of that load balancer because we want to use it later. Now we create our target group. And this is going to say uh, basically expose 6443 for all the nodes and anything in the VPC. The worker nodes won't have 6443 running, so they will become unhealthy and removed from the load balancer. Uh, but they initially will be part of the load balancer itself. And AWS has a time server uh, available on the VPCs at this 169 address. So we want to use that. We want to make sure that we are consuming that for time for all the nodes. And this also shows how you can create a patch for your cluster, or this is in case the machines, um, but it's going to be applied to all of the machines in the cluster. Now here's our Talos control gen config, and this is going to name the cluster here. We're using that load balancer endpoint that I we saved earlier. And we need to make sure we set examples and documentation off or, or false because the uh, user data section of EC2 is too small to fit all of the examples and documentation. Uh, then we're going to enable CubeSpan, like I said. We're going to set the install disk, and we're going to use that patch that we just made for the time sync server. Now I have three files in my local directory. And now we get to create the instances. And this is creating the control plane nodes first. Uh, we're just manually creating these instances with the AWS uh, EC2 run instances. Um, mainly that's because you, we have no way to like coordinate if it's part of an auto scaling group. If nodes are removed or added to the auto scaling group, they won't join uh, etcd cleanly. And so we're running static instances. We are running them across all three AZs that we're using. You'll notice here that we're looping over the subnets that we created earlier, and then we're using that to uh, run each instance in each subnet. So we'll have three nodes spread across three subnets, so it's highly available even for an AZ failure. We also save out the control plane instances. Um, we echo them down here, but we're saving them so that we can clean it up later. I think we also set the uh, load balancer to register them to make sure they get registered. For the launch templates, or for the for the workers, we're going to make a launch template and an auto scaling group, and this is so that you can scale your workers up and down. They don't matter as much as much. Using an auto scaling group will automatically spread them across all of the AZs, uh, but in this case, we need to set some things for our launch templates, such as our the AMI we're going to use, um, the instance type, the user data we want, as well as our network interface, and we do need that public IP address because we don't have a public and private subnets uh, with like a NAT gateway in between them. We just have one subnets or one VPC with the three subnets that are just being used. Everything has a public IP address. So this isn't a production setup, but it's a great getting started guide and shows you how some of it works. So let's copy all of that. Send that and then we're going to create our auto scaling group using that template that we just created. Um, right here, you can see we're, we're going to consume that. And for the demo uh, or for this walkthrough, we're just we're asking for one instance. We can scale up to three. If you want to scale it to three, you get highly available workers. Uh, but you could change these 
numbers to whatever you want to do for your uh, for your example and walkthrough. And now we're going to configure that load balancer to make sure that our control plane nodes are registered into it. And we're just taking those instance IDs because we set an instance type or, or the the um, the type of load balancer to instances. So we're saying, hey, this needs to be added to the load balancer. There it goes. And now we get to bootstrap etcd. At this point, we've created four EC2 instances. Uh, if I uh, AUS EC2 describe instances, um, I should have four of them in this list. So you can see, you know, instance one, if I scroll through the whole thing, you'll, you'll see the everything that's in it. But that's basically where we're at is we have four instances, and three of them are control plane nodes, one of them is an auto scaling group, and it's a worker. Our gen config gave us a Talos config locally, so we can authenticate to the API. And in this case, I'm just saving out uh, worker instances to an array if you have multiple of them, so we can clean it up later again. Setting the Talos config automatically will set our Talos control commands to use it. Uh, so we don't need to specify which config to use every time, just like kubeconfig does. Talos control config endpoints is going to set which endpoints we want to be available. So in this case, we're going to look at all of the control plane nodes and we're saying, hey, all of these need to be part of our endpoints and it load balances between them. If one's not available, Talos control will go to the next one. But our nodes here, we're only setting it to one. Uh, and you can set this to more, but some commands only work when you're going against one node. And in this case, the commands we need to do, we only need one node for it. So we're not load balancing. Uh, but in general, the endpoints is where you're kind of load balancing things to get access to the rest of the cluster. And the nodes is where you want action to be taken. We set both of those in the config. And if I cat my you'll see here I have my endpoints and I have my nodes. And that's exactly what we just said. Now I can run the bootstrap command. This is going to tell etcd to create a database. It's just, it's been sitting there. They're all configured. They all have user data. And this now says, go, go give me a database. I want all of these nodes to be ready to start a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, one thing I like to do, I have these reverse because you could watch the health endpoints. Well, let's go ahead and do it. Talos control health. This is going to show you the entire process of basically spinning up a Kubernetes cluster. And this is everything that's going to happen. And so we're waiting for etcd to be healthy. And so on, on the nodes that are control plane nodes, they are starting etcd right now. And we see here we have two that we're still waiting. We're just, hey, we, we want these to be available for us. They're not there yet. And so we're going to keep watching until they are all healthy. In this case, you know, 220 is the only one that's not working or not ready yet. So we're just going to wait and pull this endpoints as it goes. There we go. Uh, so etcd members applied. APID is the, the Talos API is ready. Does some validation on memory and disks. Waiting for kubelet to be healthy because it runs on all the nodes. Waiting for all the nodes to boot and then waiting them for them to report into the load balancer. And so here we have one that 220 seems to be a little slow, <laughs> um, but it's still spinning up. Let's go ahead and, and look at it actually. So the other command here is the dashboard command. And if I specify which node I want to run it on, I will get that node again through those endpoints. And so let me make this a little bit smaller, maybe. I don't know. Uh, in this case, you know, this is the normal Talos dashboard. If you're new to Talos, we have other videos showing what this does and how it works. Uh, but essentially, this will give you your log output on the system itself. Where is it starting? Here it is. I zoomed a little bit so it got thrown off. Um, but preventing requests to be completed. Oh, all of those just went healthy uh, as we were as we were sitting here watching it. So this ready is going to flip here in a second. If everything else on the node goes healthy, then that should also become ready once everything finishes a health check cycle. So if that's all still going, we can probably go back to our health command. 
and we will be almost ready. Uh, here it's waiting for the nodes to report if they're ready or not. There was four saying unready, now there's two unready. So again, these are just waiting for health checks to happen. And they do do some back offs, so the longer it takes to kind of get to that state, the longer they're gonna wait to check it again, uh, just to make sure they don't overwhelm it. We're down to one. We should be ready here in just a second. The next step here, once this is all healthy, is we're going to fetch the cube config file from the cluster. So we have all of the nodes ready. We can talk to the Talos API endpoints. We can do things on the machines. Now we need to use Kubernetes. And to do that, we get a cube config file. And this is an admin cube config file that we're going to save locally uh, to the machine. Did it, did it go back? What happened here? I was waiting for a node. Cube API server to be three, it got two. Okay, so that pressed. Oh, it did finish, okay. And in this case, we saved it to our local directory, and so we're just exporting that so we can use it. And we will get our nodes, oops. There we go, there's our four nodes. All of them, and again, this is, if you set your VPC to have resource type, uh, this makes it very easy to debug things instead of the IP addresses and trying to find it and everything. So just one of those niceties to have. And now you can use Kubernetes. Everything else from here is just straight Kubernetes. There's nothing left to do um, except for clean up everything in the cluster. And in this case, we just have one giant uh, block to delete it all if you want to. We start with deleting the load balancer, we delete the, uh, we scale the auto scaling group down, delete all the instances, delete the auto scaling group, delete the launch template, and then we wait for the instances to go away because if you don't, you can't delete the VPC because there's uh, public IP addresses. Um, so we, we try to do this as much as possible in an order that will succeed. Uh, but uh, if you get errors, just make sure that you clean, <laughs> clean up anything else that's left. Um, I've been running this uh, walk through now for, I don't know, three or four days. I've probably run it 10 to 15 times. Um, I know it works in my accounts and I think my AWS bill was like $4. Um, so if you, if you walk through this whole thing, depending on how long you leave the instances running, you should be well under like the $5 mark uh, to make sure you know how it works. There are some better ways to do this. If you don't want to run through the AWS CLI commands, we'd recommend something like Terraform. Telus has a Terraform provider, so you can check out the contrib repo, which I'll put in the show notes or, or the link, whatever, on, the, um, on, on where to see some of the other examples on how to get these bootstrapped in a more automated way. We do this manually so you can understand the steps. You know what's happening, you know everything involved in how do I create this cluster. And in this case, this is just going to wait to uh, terminate, and then we will uh, get back to a clean state. Everything should be removed from my accounts, and I'm ready to, you know, turn everything off. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope that the, that guide works for you. And there is plenty of obviously information that you can read, and you should read. There's plenty of warnings and notes about how to do things better. But in general, this is just a real quick walkthrough on how it works in the best case scenario to get you started with Talos on AWS.